good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio, and if you had any doubt whatsoever that Pokemon was not going full Gen 4 with brilliant stars, well, yeah. That doubt should be evaporating right about now. I mean, I've already shown you Arceus V-Star and Arceus being the cover Pokemon. I've already shown you that Rowan is coming around as the new Professor's Research and that Cyrus is coming around as the new Boss's Orders. But now we've got all three of the first partner Pokemon and the champion coming back in this particular set. And that should tell you pretty much everything you need to know. Pokemon TCG is going full Gen 4 and they don't care who knows it. So let's start off with Empoleon, because firstly, who doesn't love Empoleon? Secondly, wow, that artwork. Now our translations today all come from the lovely Antoine Boulet, which is honestly something right now that you should probably be expecting. And if we take a look at Empoleon here, we've got 160 HP, which is on the high end for stage twos, and a retreat cost of two, which is not ideal. Weakness to Lightning, which is not horrendous. Although, to be fair, Jolty on VMAX is very much a thing. And generally hits for 100. And then this will double and get a KO. So maybe be a little bit worried about Jolty on VMAX. That seems like it could be a bit of a pain. The good news is, we've got some stuff to like about Empoleon here. So what we've got is an ability, once during your turn, if this card is in your discard pile, and you have zero cards in hand, you may put this card onto your bench and then draw three cards. I adore this. This is phenomenal. Because the fact of the matter is, I can play this in every single deck. Every single deck. And I can have it there as an emergency. And if at any point in the game, I have got nothing, I've got a one card hand or whatever, if I can get down to an empty hand... All of a sudden, that goes up to a free card hand. Even if you never attack with Empoleon. Even if you just play it as a one-off. You bin it nice and early. We've got a billion cards that can bin it. And then, at any point in the game, if you are desperate for cards and you can empty your hand, draw free cards. It is flat out phenomenal. The attack does 60 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It's actually a nice little sniping attack. Especially in a format where we don't really have a good bench barrier which is lovely. It's not the reason to play the card, I don't think, and it is water energy, not colorless. But I think if you're playing water energy or something like Aurora energy that could count as water energy, this is awesome. Like, really nice. But you're playing this for the ability. If you've got one space left in any deck moving forward, really consider Empoleon. Because you go from a zero card hand to a free card hand. And all you need to do is get it in the discard at some point vaguely early. I love this, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely love it. Now, Infernape is also here. I don't like it as much. But we've got 150 HP, which is honestly a bit low. You know, it's 2021, right? 2022 time this comes out in the UK, US, Europe, etc. It's too low. Retrigos to 1, however, is quite nice. Weakness to water is not good. Water decks are everywhere. Now, 2 energy, 160, discard all energy from this Pokemon. I don't love it. Even if Welder hadn't rotated, it has. But even if Welder hadn't rotated, I still wouldn't love this. Because 160 isn't enough. Now, you will actually end up getting Krikatune because of weakness. But you're not even getting Crobat V here. And if you're not even getting Crobat V, you don't even come talk to me. If you're hitting for weakness, this is great. But do you really want to play a Stage 2 Fire Pokemon just in case you're hitting for weakness? Nah, me neither, actually. Now, I suppose I do need to mention it is a Fire Pokemon. And it is coming in Brilliant Stars. And in Brilliant Stars, we do have Magma Basin. And Magma Basin lets you attach a Fire Energy from your discard pile to one of your Bench Fire Pokemon. So you can get the energy on here more easily, but you need to rely on the stadium. You've got to take two damage counters. You've then got to discard all the energy, and you're not doing enough damage. It's not good enough. The first attack, however, is kind of interesting. You reveal the top five cards of your deck. You deal 80 damage for each energy revealed in this way. Discard the energy, and shuffle the other cards back into your deck. 
It's fine, but it's an unreliable stage two. And that's not good. Love the single energy. Love it. Do not like the fact that it's a stage two and the damage is unreliable. Really here, you want to hit three out of five energy to do 240 damage. And that'll start getting a bunch of key KOs. That is just difficult to pull off. Sure, that you've always got the thing, and I mention this all the time, using like energy recycler to just fill your deck full of energy. And then in the late game, cross your fingers, you can go nuts. But the fact of the matter is, it's just too awkward. Now, we've seen this before on a bunch of Pokemon. Typhlosion had massive eruption. It was basically the same. Stage 250 Pokemon single fire energy. You discarded the top five cards of your deck, not just the energy. And you did 80 for each one discarded. And Typhlosion was always an interesting card. People played around with it. It was a fun rogue deck. It was never good. And there is nothing here to suggest this will be any better than Typhlosion. I do think it is important to state that the discarding energy only rather than discarding everything. It is a huge bonus. You know, with Typhlosion, you're always terrified of discarding stuff like your rare candy or your other trainers you need to get rolling. With Infernape, that's never going to happen. You're only ever going to discard the energy. Whereas Typhlosion, a bad attack with Typhlosion could literally just wreck the entire rest of the game for you. But you're still talking about a stage 2 with unreliable damage output. Interesting, fun little rogue deck. Fun to play around with at League. Not a reliable, good card. But think of this as kind of like a sandwich. Empoleon is your delicious bread. Infernape is your underwhelming filling. Maybe you left that pack of ham open for a day or two too long. But then you've still got that other delicious piece of bread to save it. And that's Torterra. And I like Torterra. 190 HP is huge. Retreat cost of 4 is 2, but you know that's going to happen. We've got 4 energy, 160. The less said about that, the better. It's garbage. But for 2 energy, 50 damage for each of your evolution Pokemon in play. So if you've got a full bench of evolved Pokemon, combined with this, 2 energy, 300 damage. It doesn't say each of your other evolution Pokemon in play. It says each of your evolution Pokemon in play. That includes Torterra. 300 damage, 2 energy. Now, it's not quite that simple because you might want to use cards like Crobat, for instance, to get some cards in the early game. I showed you that Luminion is coming in in this particular set with the same ability as we've seen on things like Tapu Lele. You play it and then you search your deck for supporter. So you may well end up having stuff like that on the field to help you get set up in the early game, which is sad, but that's the way it is. But even if you've only got five evolution Pokemon in play, you're still doing 250. And there's nothing stopping you incidentally building a deck with evolution Pokemon, giving a bit of extra consistency, getting some draw engine stuff like Chinchino, and just playing a slightly slower game, knowing that you've got single prize Pokemon, potentially doing 300 damage. Yeah, I like this too, ladies and gentlemen. I like this too. But we've also got Grotal. Not a Pokemon I generally tend to focus on, but today I think we need to. It's not the free energy 50 damage. Incidentally, the 100 HP is also super annoying, so it means I can't use level ball, so cheers for that. But it's got an ability we've seen before. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a Grass-type Pokemon, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty good, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty gosh darn good. If you've been playing a while, you might remember this. I mean, for me, it's Sunflora from Heart Gold Soul Silver with the Sunshine Grace ability, which, well, lets you search for a Grass Pokemon. Put it into your hand. That's pretty good. Or more recently, you might remember the Grovile from Lost Thunder, which had the exact same ability. Sunflora did see a bit of play here and there. Grass was quite good at the time. Grovile, not so much. But then again, we never had a good enough set dial. Could things be changing here? Hope so. Because the fact of the matter is, this Torterra is really good. And what we really need to do is get a whole bunch of evolution Pokemon. That's the goal. Well, if I can be searching out extra Pokemon every turn, this is nuts. Incidentally, if you've never played a deck like this, another classic example, although 
not grass, would have been the Garchomp. Yeah, from Dragon's Exalted. Really good Garchomp. But it wasn't necessarily the Garchomp that we were loving that much, though it was cool. It was Gabite. Gabite had the same thing, but it was called Dragon Call, and it was a Dragon Pokemon. And essentially what you do is you have, hopefully turn one, you get four Turtwig down. And then turn two, you find one Grotal, which searches for the second, which searches for the third, which searches for the fourth, which searches for another grass Pokemon. And then turn three, you just use each of these to search for one Torterra. And then you've got an army of Torterra turn three. That's how this becomes really good. And then all you need to do is try and make sure you've got two energy on your Torterra. And all of a sudden, you're hitting a consistent 300 damage. Now, there is one thing that needs to be mentioned. And that is every time you have a Pokemon KO'd, you need to replace it. So you're often only going to be hitting 250 because you have a KO'd Pokemon. You then replace it, but you can't evolve it this turn. So that is going to take 50 damage off. A little bit sad. But 190 HP single prize Pokemon that hits 300. I cannot be the only one that's excited about this. Especially when we've got a bit of a searching engine coming in here as well. But if you're bored of first partner Pokemon and you'd rather have a human to talk about. How about Cynthia? We are getting Cynthia's Aspiration. Which incidentally is going to look really weirdly familiar to an old Cynthia card that we got back in the Diamond and Pearl era. The very first Cynthia card, incidentally. What we've got here is you draw until you've got five cards in hand. But if any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you draw until you have eight cards in hand instead. Now, the wording here is really important. And remember, Antoine is phenomenal at the wording and all of that. It is not if any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an attack. It is if any of your Pokemon were knocked out. What that means is, if your opponent uses something like Inteleon to take a KO, and let's face it, nowadays your opponent is often going to want to try and use an Inteleon to take a KO, that would still activate this. It's a good draw engine. It's a very nice draw engine. Essentially, look, drawing until you've got five cards in your hand is not great. Drawing until you've got eight cards in hand is. You get down to a one or two card hand, you draw six or seven cards... That's really, really good. Really good. And it gives a viable alternative. At the moment, we've got Professor's Research. Discard your hand, draw till you've got seven. Well, here with an empty hand, you'll actually draw more. But you also get to keep one or two cards, which you don't get to do with Professor's Research. There is a fun little combo going on here with Galarian Articuno. Galarian Articuno lets you discard two cards from your hand to draw one. So you're actually lowering your hand size as you go, but if you're going to be playing something like Cynthia's Aspiration, being able to bin cards you don't want to keep, but keep cards you do, and then draw a large hand, that's really good. Now, the card it's like to which I was alluding was Cynthia's Feelings, the first Cynthia card we ever got. You shuffled your hand into your deck and drew four cards, but if any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you drew eight. So instead of drawing until 8, it was a potential shuffle draw 8 if you had a Pokemon KO'd. That's cool. That's all play. This is cool. I imagine this will see play. And we have to make reference to Luminion here again because this is exactly the kind of card which absolutely fries with Luminion in the format. Because of course you've got that Tapu Lele ability that searches for a supporter. Well... You really, 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 really want Cynthia's Aspiration when you've had a Pokemon KO'd. But if you've not, then you'd probably much rather have something like Professor's Research. Well, the Minion makes sure that you've always got the right one at the right time. And that's absolutely brilliant. I don't think this is, in the near future, going to be able to replace something like Professor's Research. Because it's not as reliable. Professor's Research will always get you that new hand of seven cards. If this isn't on course properly, if you haven't had a Pokemon KO'd, what's actually going to happen here is you are going to only get five cards. And if you've got a three card hand, you're only really drawing two cards. This isn't really good enough. Be perfectly honest with you. But when it works, and especially now we've got a way to search it out, this is good. 
So I'm sorry, I don't think much about Infernape. I don't think that's a particularly relevant card. I think Empoleon, as a one-of in almost any deck for a tiny bit of emergency draw, is brilliant. I think Torterra's got an actual chance to be a really good, viable, single prize deck. And I think Cynthia is a really good draw card going forward. I don't want to be rude, but... This is basically a video of really good cards, ruined by Infernape. Cheers, Infernape. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think. I want to know if you're going to be playing Inteleon as a one-off like I am. I want to know if you think that Torterra's got a chance to be a really, really good deck moving forward like I do. I want to know how much play you think is going to see. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Good us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.